And if a person feels like they have to wish for death, like if a person is to a point where they are going to, you know, truly express to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the desire to no longer live, if you cannot get away from saying something of those sorts, instead of just outright asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to end your life or that he, he takes your life, the Prophet said, فَإِن كَانَ لَا بُدَّ فَاعِلًا فَلْيَقُلْ أَلَّهُمَّ أَحْيِنِي مَا كَانَتِ الْحَيَاةُ خَيْرًا لِي وَتَوَفَّنِي إِذَا كَانَتِ الْوَفَاةُ خَيْرًا لِي The Prophet said, let that person say, Allahumma ahyini, O oh Allah, give me life. Ma kana til hayatu khayran li. As long as life is good for me. As long as you know that life is good for me. Wa tawaffani and take my life. Ida kana til wafatu khayran li. If death is better for me. If you know that death is better for me. This is also, by the way, you know, very instructive in that the Prophet said, start with life. Right? Start with life. Don't start with asking for death if it's good for you. Start with the basics. Uh, the basis that Allah has put you here for a reason and that there is good in your life to still be done. Right? So start with haya. Start with, oh Allah, let me live so long as life is good for me. And then get to the part of, and take my life when you know that death is good for me. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when you're going to be at your peak. Allah azza wa ta'ala knows when you are going to be in your finest form. And, you know, just like the story of that young, uh, that young man, that child that's taken in the story of Surah Al-Kahf with Al-Khadr alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam. You know, Allah azza wa ta'ala knew what was good for that child and Allah knew what was good for those parents. And you might see someone, subhanAllah, who is, you know, an incredibly righteous person. And they're taken at a certain time and you say, subhanAllah, had they lived longer. And it may be that that person was in a state of being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their heart was in a place, their worship was at a place where that was the best time for Allah to take them. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was blessing that person with taking them at the most righteous point of their lives. And so you see sometimes very righteous people that die and you wonder why they died so young. And Allah knows best, right? And the, also the default is that the Prophet ﷺ said good deeds extend a person's lifespan. But it may be that Allah Azza knew that that was the best moment for that person because of their righteousness at those moments. That was a person that would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for husn al-khitam, for the best of endings, for the best of their deeds to be the last of their deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them in those moments because that was what was best for them, right? So we don't know. And you see righteous people pass away young, and that could be the reason indeed. So the Prophet ﷺ said, it is permissible to say, oh Allah, give me life so long as life is good for me. And take my life when you know that death is good for me. When you know that I've reached the time when death is actually good for me. There's another um, element of this, which is uh, that a person, um, you know, sees the the way the world is going and a person fears that the fitna will become so tough for them that trial and dissension will become so tough for them that they will not be able to survive whatever fitna is coming whether that is the fitna of an oppressor or that's the fitna of confusion or the fitna of misguidance whatever it may be that a person would lose themselves because of the increase of fitna and this is a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ used to, uh, a dua that the Prophet ﷺ indeed used to make. So this is something that the Messenger ﷺ kana yad'u. He used to make dua for this. So this is a dua that a person can say at all times. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, Allahumma inni as'aluka fi'l al-khayrat. I'm going to say it slower. Allahumma inni as'aluka fi'l al-khayrat wa tark al-munkarat wa hubb al-masakin. Many of you have heard me talk about this part of the dua. That, oh Allah, I ask you for the ability to do good for the ability to shun evil, and for the love of the poor, to love the poor. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَإِذَا أَرَدْتَ فِي النَّاسِ فِتْنَ فَاقْبِدْنِي إِلَيْكَ غَيْرَ مَفْتُونَ And if you have willed that the people will be tested, that there will be some sort of fitna that will come, and that this is a fitna that I may lose myself in, or that uh, faith may become uh, too difficult to hold on to, or I might not be able to cling on to it, then bring me back to you without being amongst those that are maftoon, without being amongst those that fall to the fitna. SubhanAllah, it's a beautiful dua. Why? Because a person is not asking for uh, death in that point, at that point, because of sadness or because of ingratitude, but because 
they want to die in a state of gratitude and they want to die in a place where they're closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They recognize that this life is merely a means of converting the best possible outcome in the next life. And so if a person gets to a point where this life is no longer serving that purpose, then they would rather not be in this life, right? Because if the fitna was to become so severe, and Allah knows us, Allah knows our weaknesses, if the fitna was to become so severe that a person would not be able to cling to faith, that a person would not be able to cling to purpose, then at that point, فَقْبِدْنِي إِلَيْكَ أَوْ فَتَوَفَنِي إِلَيْكَ uh, return me back to you غَيْرَ maftun without being tested or tried uh, in that way. So this is something that we also find. These are two du'as that we find, two supplications that we find from the Prophet ﷺ. In general though, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that the life of the believer is khair. It's good no matter what. With bala is ajr. With trial is a, an opportunity for reward. With test and trial comes an opportunity for reward. And every moment that you have is a moment of either tawbah or tasbih, repenting uh, for something that you have committed or glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his perfection and all that he has bestowed upon you. Every single moment is a blessing. Ajaban ni amrul mu'min. And that's why the, the affair of the believer is so strange because whether good or bad come to that person, that person is able to convert it into a beneficial uh, opportunity for them, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the betterment of their akhirah, for the betterment of their hereafter. So the Prophet ﷺ said, خَيْرُكُمْ The best of you, مَنْ طَالَ عُمْرُهُ وَحَسُنَ عَمَلُهُ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام uh, The Prophet ﷺ said, the best of you are those who live long lives and who increase their good deeds. Again, some people die young and righteous. Allah knows what's best for us. That's why we engage in the performance of good deeds. We try to find our purpose and anchor ourselves in that purpose of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as we ask him to give us the best ending, that he will give us that ending at the time that we are in the best state of faith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant that to us. We ask Allah to comfort all of those that are grieving and that are ailing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us through our hardships and difficulties. And I wanna end on this note. If you feel it on the inside, if you feel that 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 leak, that um, that constriction, that is not a sign of low faith, right? These are things that happen. A person will undoubtedly feel a sense of anxiety in the face of great trial. It's not about whether or not you feel anxiety or whether you feel hardship or whether you are feeling sadness. It's about how you act upon that sadness, right? That will bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or be in your favor or not. And so don't feel guilty if you're feeling sad or if you're feeling down. Uh, try to use that, however, to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to anchor yourself in your ultimate purpose, your purpose which is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Him and to do good. May Allah help all of us uh, through any difficult times and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help those that are oppressed around the world. Uh, I know this was a very, very long reflection. I wanted to do justice to the topic as much as I could. I'd recommend going to the trauma series on yaqeeninstitute.org and you'll find a lot in the trauma series that is a lot more uh, helpful in the Nahi Ta'ala. So jazakumallahu khayran to all of you for, for uh, tuning in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.